screw the Lambos, screw the watches. Let's get real for a while and let's think about a few things. Number one, sustainability. Number two, lifestyle. And number three, that would be your health. Okay, so now we're moving on to part two of one of the keys or the keys that it takes to become sustainable, uh, like kind of long-term profitable, maintaining a decent lifestyle and your health. Okay, so part number two is risk to reward profiling. Okay, if risk management teaches you how to lose with grace, then risk reward teaches you how to trade and profit with ruthless efficiency. So risk reward is kind of easy also to understand. It's a measure of how much you're going to win on a trade versus how much you might lose. Okay, so if you've not heard of RR, um, you're doing something wrong. If you've not heard of risk reward, you're doing something wrong. So let's take a look. Um, let's see. Okay, so this particular trade uh, was one that we shared with everybody for free not that long ago, Alpine USDT. Um, if we push, pull this one up on the charts here, you can see that I've gone ahead and drawn a bunch of stuff on. Uh, anyway, so as you can see with Alpine here, um, we can use the long and short tool to tell us what our risk reward is. Um, so if I just zoom in a little bit over here to start with, when we put this signal out a few days ago, whenever it was, nearly nine days ago, something like that, um, this was our this was our suggested entry zone. This particular box, which worked out absolutely beautifully. Um, our stop loss suggested, as you saw on on here, um, these these are the numbers basically. So all I've done is taken the entry zone from here, the targets and the stop loss, and draw them out onto the chart and just labelled them for you. So this was our entry zone. This was our stop loss. And if you use the measurement tool, you can pretty much see that from the middle of the entry down to stop loss, it was around a 7% risk, let's say. And if we measure up to target one from around the middle of the box, that would have been around here, it was roughly a 30% gain. Okay, so that's all I've done is drawn that onto the chart so you can see that. Now, if ever you're kind of trying to figure out your risk to reward, you don't need to sit there measuring everything. You can jump over to the long or short position tool, which is what these are, and you just place it onto your chart wherever your entry is, uh, move the stop to wherever your stop might be, and then you can pull this up towards your targets, whether you're aiming for target one down here or target two up here or target three. You can start measuring out your risk to reward um, to think about how you want to play this particular trade or whether this trade fits your risk reward profile okay so as you can see for us here on this particular setup that we shared you your risk to reward up to target one from your entry zone was roughly four to one which is really nice now if we are going for target two it was nearly 10 to one and target three was 20 to one so this gives you an idea, hopefully at least, of just how you can use TradingView to quickly measure things up. One more pro tip that I'm just going to give you is that actually you can jump into the settings of this tool. And in these inputs, you can add your account size of, say, 10,000. And you can say that your risk is 5%. And it's going to grab your entry price um, and your stop loss price and then in the box just here this this right here it tells you how much you can risk on your trade so it does your position sizing for you so have a play around with that and you'll be able to see yeah what 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 they think you should be doing as it were in terms of how much you are willing to risk on your trade um, these would obviously all be the same because the stop loss value for all of these is near enough the same. So if I go ahead in here and say I want the $10,000 with a 5% risk, once again you'll see that it's saying you could risk around $2,000 on this particular trade um, with the risk profile we've been talking about. Okay, so what does, this, uh, what does this mean for you guys that are using the platform or thinking of using the platform? Well, basically it's not a bad idea to, when you receive a new signal, 
open up the charts, just have a look at things, draw things out and think about what your risk to reward profile is. Think about whether you want to be moving your stop loss. Um, some of the trade, not all of the trades are set up like this. this. This particular trade has amazing risk to reward at all levels, all of them. Um, some of them though are going to be closer to sort of one and a half to one, some are two to one, three to one, this kind of thing. Um, but part of the reason some of the trades have that lower RR is because the default stop loss is beneath the lowest part of the entry. Now, if we think for a moment, I'm just going to jump over to our results area um, and pull that up for you guys. Bear with me. Okay, so let's think for a moment. Um, if we look at the results for all of 2021 and scroll down to here, we can see how many of our trades are reaching which of our targets. Um, let's pass up on that for now. What's more, more interesting for the moment is this is what I'm looking for, the average entry depth. So this is a measure of all the completed trades that we had last year. How far down into our suggested entry zone did the coin price come? So as you can see, on average, it was nearly, nearly the middle of the entry zone, just a little bit higher. Um, if I were to skip over to more recent months, such as February, um, you're going to see that it's been a little bit higher at times. Let's just let this load up. There we go, around 37%. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make, if I jump back over to Alpine, if I were to draw up a new pretend entry zone for a new signal, let's say we were, we were aiming to buy again right now, we would expect that for a trade that is going to be able to continue its life cycle all the way through, it's going to do something like this. Now, if your original stop loss is down here, well, that's not, it's not necessary that you leave it there. Um, it's quite fine and a very good strategy, to be honest. A lot of us do this and a lot of other members do is to actually set the default stop loss further up because we could safely assume for some of the strategies at least that if we get too deep into the entry zone, um, we would rather jump out because we're going to assume that that trade is not going to go on to become a winning signal based on the averages and the data that we have in the past. Now, if you think about what's happening here, if I just pull up a position tool here, if your original stop loss was down here, and let's say target one was up here where this arrow is, as the, the trade is set up right now on the screen, your risk is something like, 2.6 uh, or 1 to 2.6. If I move my stop loss up here and sort of play the odds that as we know them, uh, we can start saying, okay, this is now an eight, eight to one risk or reward to risk. Um, so that's all I really wanted to point out. Just think about your overall risk to reward profile. Um, it's not as simple as I'm making it here. Of course, stop losses are important. You have to think about where to place these in terms of support. You have to think about how market makers behave. And of course, you know, any of these kind of lows, everyone has put their stop loss here right now. It's, you know, it's just a very obvious place that market makers might want to come down to to hunt liquidity. So I'm not saying you should just budge, budge your stop loss up every time. But I'm just pointing out that, guys, there is a reason that the forms and the trade forms are fully customizable. Um, it's for this exactly. Okay, so hopefully, guys, now you've got your head around position size management and your kind of ultimate risk value of 2 to 5%. You've understood how you can use these tools now to help you position size. And you've understood how to use these tools to measure your risk reward.